So atrial fibrillation is a, an electrical problem uh, in the heart. Basically, it causes the heart to beat in like a and, spark and, plug. Uh, yes, it's a spark plug, and and so and it's the most complex electrical problem in the heart, and the most uh, highly detected uh, uh, arrhythmia. So as a result, more and more people are being diagnosed than had been before. In fact, the American Heart Association just upped the 10 million estimate to 30 million a couple of years ago. So it's a tremendous problem. It has major impact on a lot of people. And your quality of life really is it deteriorates once it becomes a major uh, factor in your life. So to, to stop it, our treatment is, is really an improvement on existing treatment that isn't, uh, it isn't highly uh, utilized because of, again, throughput problems and, and equipment problems. And we, we have the equipment solution. There's medication treatments. They're just highly ineffective. And there's also another treatment called cardioversion. They're about 20 to certainly much less than 50% effective, probably about 25, 30% effective. And even those people have, uh, don't get long-term, do not get long-term benefit from those procedures or the, or the medications. So the most effective treatment has been this ablation, the burning of tissue in the heart to stop this unwanted electrical activity. And that treatment is about maybe 60 to 70% effect over the last 15 or so years. So it's incrementally gotten better. But a lot of doctors won't do it because the procedures take four to six hours. These are cardiologists tedious. would be doing it? Electrophysiologists. Okay. A subset of the cardiology. Medical is a difficult area, number one, uh, because it takes a lot of money, a lot of time. Uh, the regula regulatory p pathway makes it much more expensive. Uh, there's a lot of risks involved, liability is an issue. Um, and it's just a long time to go from, from a concept to a commercial product. It takes uh, three to five years probably on, on average, and that's if things go reasonably well. So there's a lot of upfront money, but we're in one of the few medical technology fields that actually has a tremendous upside on, on, on the commercial side. Many of the me medical fields have you know, marginal, uh, let's say, financial benefits um, in terms of the, the equipment that's being developed. And, and they, you know, again, this is a high volume uh, device or something like that. But this is, this is a tremendous need and with a tremendous upside because of the fact that there's, uh, again, many patients aren't being treated. The hospitals see this as a, as a profit center. And so that's one of the few areas that, that it is a profit center. The cardiology in general and the electrophysiology uh, uh, department in particular has become a major uh, uh, benefit. So there's a tremendous backside opportunity, but on the, on the risk, on the, on the front side, it's risk. People see it as risk. And I think trying to tell people that we're minimizing risk in a number of different ways. First of all, um, companies in our space are acquiring, the big companies, Johnson & Johnson, Medtronic, Boston Scientific, they're acquiring companies for between 100 and $500 million over the last decade and a half. And they're doing it before those, many cases before those companies become commercial. So that's a major, major benefit. You know, people are not looking, you know, we don't have to look for, for people to buy us if we decided to sell the company down the road or team up with us as an alliance company.